My name is Tanisha Shante, and welcome to my channel. I have a friend that we joke on signing up for Love is Blind, and solely because of us being pretty much done with our dating life. And just in case we don't find anyone, we always joke about going on Love is Blind. And when I was talking with her, I'm like, I would totally do that. I would totally do it. And the next time I saw her, you know, she was like, you know, I, I researched it and I know where to sign up and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, oh, girl, no, no, I can't do it. I can't do it. And I don't think I'm ready. I got, a, I got a lot of other stuff to do. And she said she wasn't ready either due to job reasons. But fast forward weeks after that, which is today, I was like just thinking about that. And I'm like, I can't go on Love is Blind. I fear rejection too much. And that, that would, oh, my God, just tear my insecurities up and... I would just look like the crazy one because it would be just so much rejection. And when I say rejection, I mean that since there's only one person that I'm supposed to be with on that show, everyone else rejected me or not wanting me. That sounded kind of weird, but I meant like being rejected by multiple guys because yeah, I was supposed to be with one person and then you know, what if the guy I like doesn't like me back or is not feeling me back? Or what if I don't even get picked at all or find anyone at all? That's a form of rejection for me. And I wouldn't know how to take it. And I let that sit today. And I'm like, but why? Why is that a thing? Why do I fear rejection? You know, and I have my reasons maybe for my upbringing and it's a long story for the most part and I thought about those things and then I'm like how can I not fear rejection I need to look this up because with everything I always look it up I always research about it I always try to get to the root because I don't want to continue to feel the same feelings and be in the same spot so I'm like, okay, let me look this up. This is also while I was driving and listening to the Self Love Fix podcast by Beatrice, which has been really helping me a lot. I've just started from the beginning. And so, yeah, I just got to thinking about that and saying to myself, you know, when I get home, I'm going to research it. But one thing I've noticed about me um, is when I want to research some things, some things I just obviously don't know, but some things I do know. And so I realized that there are times when I'm talking to someone and I'm talking about a subject and the truth, I feel like just spews out of me. And then I'll go back and listen to it or even in the moment, just be like in awe. It's like, where did that come from? And it's like, almost like someone's like taking over my body and just to just spew out this truth and I just feel like it's right and I just feel like it's just almost not of me and I'm like where did I get this from or I'm like what <laughs> did that come from me you know so I did that with the fear of rejection I took a moment I'm like you know what if someone asks me how do I get over the fear of rejection? How do I not let rejection take its toll on me? Like, how do I not let it affect me so much? So I asked a question to myself in order to help myself. And I was surprised at what came out. Again, truth, I felt it to the point where I decided to go in my apartment and record this here message because I wanted to share with other people and help someone. So the answer that came out of me, surprisingly, is to get over the feelings of rejection, the fear of being rejected, the effects of feeling rejected is to realize 
that someone who has rejected you in any way doesn't have anything to do with you. Everyone is entitled to their own opinions, choices, decisions, their own life. And you never know what someone is going through that made them reject you or made them make you feel that way. You know, so it's just a choice that someone else has made, but it doesn't have anything to do with you. It could just be that y'all just are not matched for each other if it's regarding a relationship. If it's regarding a family member, it could be that that person doesn't have the capacity or what it takes to love you. They don't know how. Or they're wrestling with other things with themselves. They're going through the same things you're going through. They're broken. You know, it could be anything. But the thing is, you have to realize that that rejection has nothing to do with you. Think of it like this just popped up in my mind. Think of it as if you are in the grocery store and, you know, if <laughs> if fruit had fillings, you know, um, you go on and you just you pick a bundle of bananas, you know, just because you picked them, you know, just that's what you were drawn to pick. And you picked a certain bundle of bananas out of this massive aisle of bananas. And if all the bananas have feelings, don't you think it would be weird for all the bananas to be like, you didn't pick me, you know, or to have that feeling of rejection, to feel some type of way because they weren't picked as if something was wrong with them, right? But look at it like that. That's honestly how it happens majority of the time. It's just that people just have their own choices for whatever reasons, and they are entitled to that. It has nothing to do with you. So if you look at it like that and realize that, I do feel that you will have a new perspective on someone, quote unquote, rejecting you. Be happy. I would be happy now that I'm looking at it at a different perspective. I would be happy that they haven't wasted my time, you know? And then I would be happy that I didn't waste my time by trying to prove myself that I'm worthy of their acceptance. That person just may not be for you in that season of your life. And the feelings of rejection always stems from upbringing and you know how your upbringing was and it can stem from almost anything honestly but most of the time it's from upbringing how was your relationship with your parents for me that is the case so i have to go back and tend to my inner child and let my inner child know that just because someone doesn't accept you that does not mean that something is wrong with you. Even in school, gym class, where we had to pick teams and the gym teacher would choose two captains and the captains would pick people from the rest of the class. Would I always get picked last? Yes. Why? I thought it was because, and it probably was, honestly, <laughs> because I was a little chubby and I looked like I wouldn't, you know, work as hard. <laughs> and if that was the reason, hey, I, I mean, that's okay. Because guess what? I was chubby and I probably wasn't gonna work as hard. I knew that. But when I wasn't picked, I did feel some type of way because that meant to me that I'm not worthy. No one likes me, no one values me, no one, wants me so it went deeper that rejection went deeper than it should have gone when on in actuality the captain was just trying to pick the best team members that they thought because again they are entitled to their opinions and entitled to think critically for themselves right so that is what happened they wasn't outright saying to me like oh she's worthless and oh we don't like you. You know, it went deeper than it should have went. And I have to tell my inner child, look, it has nothing to do with you. Let them think for themselves. 
just like you're able to do the same you know you're able to do the same don't take it too personal right so that's how i address the fear of rejection and after saying all that could i go on love is blind <laughs> if i desire to if they you know if i filled out the application and they picked me to go on the show would i go on the show <sighs> i don't know at this point i feel like i need to be a little more whole if that's a thing um i think the fear of rejection needs to be completely gone for me i think that yeah as a person i need to be a little more confident because honestly i'm not i'm working on myself i'm digging up those roots from my upbringing and i'm digging up the the reasons why i do the things that i do why i feel the way i feel when i'm coming up against people that do things and i feel some type of way about it so um this is not a fake it till you make it kind of process i really do have to do the self-work and so as I work on the fear of rejection and digging up those roots, talking to my inner child, when I'm done with that, maybe, maybe, you know, I can say, you know, if I had the opportunity, I would, you know, but I have to have confidence in myself. I have to love myself enough to not allow the outside to set the temperature on how much I love myself or how much I am valued or how much I feel worthy of myself or worth in general. I think at some point when I can, yeah, not allow anything other than my own self to set the temperature of how worthy I am, how valued I am, then maybe I'll be ready for Love is Blind. <laughs> but until then, I have a lot of work to do. So I just want to encourage everyone to ask those questions of why. First, if you feel some type of way because something happens, feel it. Then ask yourself, why am I feeling this way? Dig deep, ask the right questions and be honest with yourself. Why am I feeling like this? Why am I feeling so bad with someone not choosing me to the point where I'm down for the whole day or week or month? Like I just cannot understand to the point where even I try to prove myself to that person because I've done that so many times just because I feel like their attention wasn't on me or they didn't accept me and I had to prove to myself that I'm worthy. I'm a good person. And you know what? As I'm saying this, it all, again, goes back to your upbringing. The thought that popped in my head as I asked myself those questions just now is because that is how I felt towards my mom. I felt she loved me and showed affection to me when I was doing good. And when I wasn't, or not necessarily doing anything bad, I just wasn't doing anything good at the time, just neutral, you know, I didn't get as much love. And I always wondered, does she love me? And it kind of stirred up people pleasing. And so just because I knew I would get a certain kind of attention or affection when I did something good or that she approved of, I would try to do more of those things. And again, proving that I'm worthy of love, that, you know, I also felt that she didn't know the real me. She never got to know the real me. And because of that, I felt unaccepted by my mom. So I'm like, look, you know, this inner child is saying, look, mama, like, I, I like this. I like that. I'm just, I'm not like, I'm not a bad person. I'm, I just, <sighs> Sorry. Oh, I'm just tearing up, but we need to heal our inner child. But that was the case. That's for me, that is where it goes back to feeling like I'm rejected because there's no affection at all. 
there's no attention at all. And then when I do something that pleases her, there is attention. A little bit of affection. She wasn't very affectionate, but that it's different. I felt more loved. So I tried to prove myself over and over and over again that I want that. I want more of this, you know? Um, and so, yeah, ask those questions and be honest with yourself. And it's going to hurt. The child is going to come out and act out. For me, it's like with sadness and, and longing and desire. Some of y'all, it may be anger because you don't want to let those emotions out. So deal with that and just be honest with yourself and do what's necessary to get past what comes up. So I hope that you can overcome this and further embark on your self-awareness journey to becoming healed and whole. Until next time.